Those who have joined the class can give their attendance in the chat box. I repeat, those who have joined the class can give their attendance in the chat box. Today, electrical people is not there with us because they are having the lab examinations. So that is not an issue. I will give the recorded lecture of today's class in the Google Classroom. From that classroom, they can uh, see this lecture. Okay. <clears throat> Can anyone please respond whether the slides are visible or not? Anyone please respond whether the slide is visible or not? Yes, slide sir. Is visible. Okay. Fine. So today we are starting the fresh module of this course that is friction. This module will not come in your uh, midterm one syllabus. Fine. So before starting this fresh module, I want to know from your end, what do you understand by the term called friction? Sir, it's basically the opposing force which acts on the rough That surface. means I can say that if I am having any kind of rough surface, on that rough surface, if I am having any body, and if I want to move that body, then the movement of the body is only possible if there is an opposing force against that moving body. And that opposing force is nothing but the frictional force which is generated due to the presence of irregularities or roughness in the surface or on the surface on which that body is being kept. Is it correct? Yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. So, so far, if you have seen whatever we have discussed in the previous module, so far what we have assumed, we have assumed that if I am having a body, if I am having a body, say this is a body which is placed on a surface, which is placed on a surface, fine. And if you are moving this body by some amount force, say P, then the body will move. But I have assumed that the contact point between the body and the surface is smooth. That means the surface on which the body is being kept, that is an ideal surface. No roughness is present in the surface. But you please tell me, practically, is the condition possible? Practically, the surface on which you kept any kind of, you keep any kind of body, is that surface will be an ideal surface or it will be a rough surface? A rough surface. Yes. In ideal case, the contact surface will contain no irregularity. But if you consider the practical case, always there is irregularity present between the two contacting surfaces due to roughness of the surface. That means, if you observe this particular end, which end, this encircle portion of this problem, by the help of microscope, what you can observe? You can observe the figure like this. These are what? These are imperfections or irregularities. This is the irregularity of the body. And uh, this is the irregularity of the surface on which the body is being kept. 
This is the irregularity of the surface on which the body is being kept. Due to this irregularity or due to this roughness, there exists friction between the contacting surface of the fixed surface and the body. Fine. And that friction is responsible to move this body either in this direction or in this direction or in any kind of inclined direction. This phenomena is known as friction. Is it clear to all of you? Is it clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any doubt so far? Other people, please respond. Only Shubha is responding. Other people, please respond whether the term friction is clear or not. <clears throat> okay, if no one is responding, then I will assume that the concept is clear to you. So that means whenever a body slides over another body, a force is exerted at the surface of contact by the stationary body. That means, let us consider a body. Let us consider a body. This is a body. This is a body. Fine. When this body slides over another body, and that body is the surface. So this is the surface. On this surface, the body will move, this body will move, say this body is moving in this direction by force P. Then, a force is exerted at the surface of contact by the stationary body. Stationary body is what? Stationary body is nothing but this uh, fixed surface on which this body is being placed. And the point of contact between this body and this fixed surface is this particular point. This is the point of contact. Fine. So the stationary body then exerts a resisting force opposite to the direction of the applied force to make the body move. That resisting force is known as force of friction. And that frictional force always acts in opposite direction to the direction of the applied force. Or to the or this frictional force always act in direction opposite to the direction of motion of the body. This is the direction of motion of the body. And this force is your frictional force. In coming slides, you will come to know that this frictional force is given by the relation F is equal to mu, that is coefficient of friction present between the contacting surfaces into the normal reaction. That means if the weight of the body is W, which is acting downward from the center of gravity, then the surface, the fixed surface will exert a reaction on this body vertically upward. This is nothing but N. Then in coming slides, you will come to know that this frictional force is what? It is nothing but mu times of N. And this force is your frictional force, which help the body to move in the opposite direction. Is the concept clear? Any doubt so far? Any doubt so far? No, sir, no doubt. Okay. So normally the frictional forces are present throughout in nature and exist to a considerable amount or extent in all the machines. Since if you clearly analyze all the contacting surfaces, those contacting surfaces can be the contacting surfaces of two machines or that contacting surfaces can be a contacting surface of a fixed uh, system with a variable element. Fine. Always there are roughness present in that those uh, contacting surfaces. And due to those contacting surfaces, friction will always exist in nature. Okay. Next case slide. So... Here, what we have taken, we have taken a horizontal plane. This horizontal plane is fixed. 
uh, over that horizontal plane, I have placed a block whose weight is W acting vertically downward. And this block is pulled in the positive X direction. If you see clearly, the contacting surface between the block and the horizontal plane is which surface? This is uh, this surface. This is the contacting surface between the block and the horizontal plane. And you can see that the contacting surface is rough in nature. It is not smooth. If it is not smooth, then in order to move this block in this direction by the application of load P, in the opposite direction of motion, you have to apply a force that will resist this particular force P. And that resisting force against the direction of motion of the body is known as your frictional force F. That is, this friction and this friction force F act on the junction of the contacting surfaces. That is, this is your frictional force F. Now read the statement. It is written, when a force P is applied to the block in a direction parallel to the surface of contact. This is the surface of contact. Force P is parallel to the surface of contact. A uh, force, capital F, automatically get induced, that is the frictional force F, acts in a direction opposite to that in which the motion is sought. Since the motion is taking place in this direction due to the application of load P, so in opposite direction, you have to apply the frictional force F. Now, this resisting force F, this, re this resisting frictional force acts tangentially to the contacting surfaces. You can see, you can see that the frictional force is tangent to the contacting surfaces. This is the tangent and it is making a tangent. It is making a tangent to this contacting surfaces and is known as the frictional force or the force of friction given by the expression F is equal to mu into N. Is the concept clear? The concept of frictional force? Any doubt? So far? No, sir. No, no. Okay. Next is the different types of friction. So, if you have understood the concept, can you tell me that we normally walk? We normally walk on any surface. We walk on surface by the help of which phenomena? By the help of friction. So I can say that friction exists between the contacting surface of my foot and the surface on which I walk. If I am walking in forward direction, that frictional force will act between the contacting surface of foot and the floor in the opposite direction. Then only I can walk or else I cannot walk. I will fall down if the friction is not present. So this is one of the example by which you can clearly define what is friction and what is force of friction. Is it clear to all of you? Any doubt so far? No, sir, not at all. Okay. Next is different types of friction. In order to understand the different types of friction, let us consider a situation. Situation is, let us consider a block. This is a block. It is having a mass M. Weight of the block is acting vertically downward from its center of gravity, that is W. And we know that W is how much? It is equal to M into G because W is in Newton and M is in kg. So you know the relationship between W and M. That is W is equal to M into G. Now this block is placed on this surface and this surface is rough in nature. Now on this block uh, in positive x direction, a low force is applied that is P. Due to this application of this force P, the block will move in this direction. That means this is nothing but the direction of impending motion. Direction of impending motion means 
that particular motion in which the block is moving so block is moving along positive x direction so my positive x direction will be the impending motion and since the contacting surface between the block and the surface is rough then i know that this block can only move if there is friction if there is a force of friction and that force of friction will act tangentially on the contacting surfaces against the direction of impending motion since this is the direction of impending motion and uh, so the frictional force will act in this direction that is denoted by symbol capital f and since this surface is in contact with this block so surface will give a reaction to the block in upward direction at this particular point denoted by symbol capital n which is normal reaction is the condition clear any doubt in the condition of the problem so far any doubt in the condition of the problem so far no sir no doubt okay so next what i do is that i draw a graph i draw a graph between the applied load p and the frictional force f frictional force f is in y direction and applied force p is in x direction i draw a graph during the entire motion or during the entire experiment of this object then what i do is this force p which i have applied on this body to move this body this force p is an increasing force it is a continuously increasing force that means slowly slowly this force p is increasing you can see at some time period this is the magnitude of force p this is the magnitude of force p if you see at this particular point of the graph fine this is the magnitude of force p again at some interval of time so this force p is what this force p is continuously increasing force okay now in order to oppose this force p or to resist this force p that means in order to keep the body in equilibrium you need to apply a force between the contacting surface that force is known as frictional force which is this force which is this frictional force now this since this force p is a continuously increasing force so in order to keep the body in equilibrium at each and every interval of time the frictional force f should also be a continuously increasing force in each and every interval of time then only the entire body will be in equilibrium yes or no yes or no hello sir voice is cracking sir what i am telling is if this applied force p is continuously increasing force in order to keep this body in equilibrium at each and every interval of time frictional force f should also be a continuously increasing force then only and at each and every interval of time the body will be in equilibrium yes or no yes sir fine okay so if you see the graph c say at uh, some interval of time at some interval of time if this is my point in the graph corresponding to this particular point this is your p say p is 2 newton corresponding to this particular point this is your frictional force f say f is 2 newton that means it is linearly varying you can see again after some interval of time this is the position this is the position say if p is 4 newton f is also 4 newton so this graph is a continuously increasing graph and it's a linear graph and it is a linear graph <clears throat> then after some interval of time a limit will come there will be a limit beyond which this frictional force f you cannot increase 
because there is a certain limit of frictional force fine after certain limit you cannot increase that frictional force you cannot increase that frictional force fine so this is that particular limit see this is that particular limit at this particular point the magnitude of frictional force is this particular region this is the magnitude of frictional force after this point you cannot increase the frictional force because of the property of the material so if you cannot increase the frictional force but that means this force is constant now this frictional force is constant force you can, you are not increasing but this applied force p is a, a constantly increasing force so if f is constant and if p is increasing constantly uh, increasing in each and every step slowly then the motion of the body will take place in this direction yes or no from this region till this much region till that is this much region of the graph there is no motion of the body why there is no motion of the body because till this much in this region of the graph continuously p is also increasing and continuously frictional force f is also increasing at each and every interval of time in order to keep the body in equilibrium but there will be a certain limit of frictional force after which you cannot increase the frictional force because of the presence of the material of the body because of the presence of the material of the surface on which it has been kept so that particular limit that uh, particular limit is this particular limit corresponding to this limit this is the maximum frictional force this is the maximum frictional force but after this point this frictional force cannot increase this frictional force cannot increase but p is increasing gradually when p is increasing gradually and frictional force f is kept constant then slowly slowly what will happen the static position of the body will get changed into the dynamic position of the body now this body will be in motion slowly slowly and the body will never come back to the rest condition are you getting my point yes sir fine so this particular limiting point this particular limiting point at which at which this particular limiting point at which the body is in the state of rest before which the body is in the state of rest after this limiting point body is in the state of motion that particular limiting point value is known as limiting friction this type of frictional this type of friction at this particular point the friction frictional force that this body exists that frictional force is known as limiting friction that means the maximum frictional force exerted at the time of impending motion that means when the motion is about to begin the frictional force present in the body that frictional force is known as limiting friction and this is the first type of friction is it clear any doubt so far what is limiting friction any doubt so far no sir no doubt okay now if you see okay mm -hmm. after the limiting point after the limiting point p is constantly increasing if p is constantly increasing the body is changing its state of rest to the state of motion that means this particular region of the graph indicates that the body is in motion and uh, this particular region of the graph indicates that the body is in the state of rest fine so during the motion again this frictional force f is present 
the frictional force F is present, which is a constant frictional force. Then that time, when the body is in motion, that frictional force, we call it as the dynamic friction or the kinetic friction. Dynamic friction or kinetic friction. That means when the body is in motion, during that condition, the friction force exerted between the point of contact is known as the dynamic friction or kinetic friction at the limiting point. This is the limiting region. This is the limiting point where the body is changing its state of rest to state of motion. At that time, the frictional force present in the body that is known as limiting friction before that before the limiting region point that means this is the region this is the region in which p is also increasing gradually f is also increasing gradually fine that means at each and every interval of time the body is in the state of rest during that time period frictional force exists in the body is known as static friction is known as static friction. That means with this example, with this graph, we can explain three different types of friction. First one is static friction. Second one is limiting friction. Third one is dynamic friction. What is static friction? When the body is not moving at all, during that time, the frictional force present in the body is static friction. That means during this region, the frictional force exerted by the body will be your static friction at this particular point. Fine. When the frictional force cannot increase, that means a limiting value of frictional force has came. But after that point, what is happening? Only the applied force is increasing. That means the body is changing at that particular point. Body is trying to change its state of rest to state of motion that but in that particular region the frictional force exerted by the body will be the limiting friction and beyond this limiting point that means this in this region the body is in motion continuously at the during this uh, motion region the frictional force exerted by the body is your dynamic friction or kinetic friction. So these are the three basic type of friction which we can clearly explain by this diagram. Is it clear to all of you? Any doubt so far? Any doubt so far? No sir, no doubt. Okay. So these are the three basic types of frictions which we can uh, define by the help of this example. In this slide, all the theory is given to you. Whatever I have discussed now, just now, all these theories are given to you. You can uh, refer it later on. Fine. Okay. Now, one more type of friction exists when a body is in contact with, with any surface. And that type of friction is known as dry friction. What is dry friction? That is the friction between dry surfaces in contact is known as dry friction. When there are two surfaces, fine. See, the contacting surfaces can be dry in nature. It can be wet in nature. So if the contacting surface is dry in nature, then during that time, the frictional force that exists in that particular region in order to make the body move is known as dry friction. And normally, dry friction, again, it can be classified into two types. The first type is rolling friction and the second type is sliding friction. What is rolling friction? We can... Uh, Rolling friction is what? That is friction between two surfaces which are separated by ball or roller. That means, that means if I take say an inclined plane, this inclined plane is making an angle theta. Fine. On this inclined plane, if I keep a ball or a roller 
and if i apply a force in this direction then the tendency of the ball or roller is to fall down the inclined plane during this condition during this condition frictional force exists between this inclined surface and uh, the uh, between the inclined surface and the roller surface that means this particular surface the in this surface since the motion is in this direction so friction will be in this direction this friction f is which type of friction it is rolling friction is it clear that means the ball or the roller is rolling down the inclined plane is it clear rolling friction any doubt in rolling friction no sir no doubt okay the second type of dry friction is sliding friction that means again if i take the same example but i will change the object again i am having an inclined plane making an angle theta uh, on this inclined plane now if i keep a rectangular block box if i keep a rectangular box and if i apply a load p then box is having a tendency to move down the inclined plane in this case again a friction will act in order to make this body move down the inclined plane that friction force will act between the point of contact of the inclined surface and uh, the block surface that is this is this portion is the contacting surfaces and since the contacting surfaces is dry in nature so it is a part of sliding friction now if you see in this diagram the body this rectangular body is sliding down the inclined plane see the area contacting area of this problem and contacting area of this problem in this problem the entire rectangular block is sliding down the inclined plane so in order to make this body move in the downward direction i have to apply a frictional force in the opposite direction to the direction of motion at the point of contact so this is that frictional force f and this frictional force f is which type of frictional force it is a sliding frictional force so this is the difference between a rolling friction and sliding friction is it clear to all of you any doubt yes, so far sir. any doubt so far no sir no, no okay so if there is having any kind of doubt i am having one question so please answer my question my question is listen very very carefully in which type of friction whether it is a rolling friction or it is a sliding friction in which type of friction the applied force p will be greater in order to make the body move again i am repeating my question in which type of friction whether it is rolling friction or sliding friction the magnitude of force p will be higher in order to move the body in sliding friction or in rolling friction and why that means in other word if i tell you that whether the magnitude of rolling friction is more or the magnitude of sliding friction is more in order to make the body move down the plane tell me whose magnitude will be more sir, sliding rolling friction, friction will basically depend on the angle and uh, in which the body is inclined so uh, sir sliding friction oh, uh, if, not... if you are telling fine 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 if you are telling that uh, if say if this angle is uh, say 10 degree it will the body will not fall and if this angle theta in sliding friction is say 85 degree then the body will fall you are trying to say like that like right yes sir i'm basically okay. uh, fine, fine, fine. 
that is correct but uh, the angle is fixed i have told you that for this condition also theta is uh, say 45 degree for this condition also theta is 45 degree now tell me whose magnitude will be greater rolling friction magnitude is greater or sliding friction magnitude is greater that means in order to make this body move down the inclined plane magnitude of p is greater or in order to move this rectangular body to sir, slide down sir, the inclined plane magnitude of this force p is greater so the strongest friction will be the static friction which is usually followed by sliding friction which friction i have given you two conditions tell me in which condition the value of force p will be greater in this condition or in this condition during sliding friction condition or during rolling friction condition that is my question did you got my question so sliding will be i think greater no in sliding friction the amount of force p required to move the body down the inclined plane is less than that in rolling friction if you keep the angle theta same how if on this uh, in case this is case a this is case b in case a if i make a small ditch over here if i make a small ditch over here this is a small ditch ditch means what ditch means a depression depression say this is and if i assume this particular portion if i assume this particular portion i can see this portion like this i can see this portion like this this is that ball this ball is placed on a surface and on this surface a depression is there this is that depression a depression is there fine so my task is what my task is to what will be the value of this force p so that this ball easily moves out of this depression this is my target how i can do it how i can do it since uh, ab if i is this ab region is nothing but the depression region fine so and the surface is rough so there will exist a frictional force which is opposite to the direction of the motion of the body that means in uh, this direction frictional force will act at the point of contact surface ab that is ab is the point of contact surface okay so under equilibrium conditions now if you see if you try to apply this load p in this direction the body will roll in clockwise direction that means the body will that means the touch the touch will disengage in these portions in these portions slowly slowly the touch will get disengaged and body will try to roll or will try to get out from this ditch portion or from this depression portion through point a that means i have to apply a reaction force at point a not in the region ab because there is no touch once you apply this force p yes or no yes or no yes sir yes sir fine so that means i can say that in order to make or in order to move this body out of the ditch the body is rolling continuously through point a that means during the entire process only this roller will have a touch at point a that means through point a only the frictional force will act and that to in this direction not through this surface ab is it clear 
to all of you any doubt so far any doubt so far no sir no doubt okay so if i draw the diagram the diagram is like this this is my roller and uh, this is my ditch that means and this is my point a if this is my point a and if i draw the free body diagram of this body weight of the roller is acting vertically downward see the touch has been disengaged this is a this is b touch has been disengaged in this condition and uh, the force p is applied in this direction this is nothing but radius of the roller say r then since this roller is in contact with the contacting surface at point a at some given instant of time so this contacting surface a will exert a reaction on this roller in this direction this is that uh, reaction r or n that means this reaction r or n is it clear is it clear any doubt so far no sir no doubt fine so let us assume let us assume that uh, let us uh, assume that the distance between the center point of the roller and this contact point a is x and since during the entire process the body is rolling about point a in order to take out this body from the depression ab i can apply moment through at point a yes or no if i apply moment at point a then i know that moment is what moment is force into perpendicular distance so one force is this w into this distance x and it will try to roll the body in anti clockwise direction so w into x if i take moment about a and i have taken anti clockwise moment positive and the second moment will be the second moment will be this uh, horizontal force p this uh, horizontal force p into this particular distance this is that perpendicular distance because this angle is 90 and this distance is nothing but distance ob and uh, so i can write and this p into ob is trying to roll this uh, block in clockwise direction if i have assumed anti clockwise moment positive i have to assume clockwise moment negative so minus p into ob equal to 0 if i take moment about point a that is w into x minus p into ob equal to 0 is this condition clear to all of you any doubt so far any doubt so far with this moment equation about point a no sir no okay now if i assume if i assume that this depression or the ditch this uh, depression or the ditch is very small if it is very small then i and if this is my point b that is if this is my point b and this if this point b and this ditch is very small so i can assume that this ditch coincide with this part of the circle if it coincides with this part of the circle then this distance ob is nothing but equal to radius of the roller so in place of ob i can substitute r yes or no is it clear any yes, doubt sir. fine no, so in place of ob i can replace r then the equation becomes take this expression right hand side it will be wx is equal to pr it will be wx equal to pr so now see this uh, r or this normal reaction m will have two components 
this r or this normal reaction in will have two component one component is this component along negative x direction which is your frictional force and another component is in vertical direction which is your normal reaction component i will tell it as n dash which is my normal reaction component and this negative x component is my frictional force f is it clear is it clear yes sir fine now in order to make this roller or in order to take out this roller out of this ditch definitely the value of force p is more than the frictional force f that means the body will be in dynamic condition that means the this friction f will be the dynamic friction yes or no this friction f is dynamic friction yes or no so that's why this force p is always greater than this dynamic frictional force f in case of sliding motion only if you change the angle if you change the angle of the inclined plane accordingly the body will slide very easily but in case of rolling motion in case of rolling motion even if you change the uh, angle of the inclined plane but if there is a slight ditch is present then in order to take out that body out from that ditch you have to apply larger amount of force p in order to that the force p which you have applied in sliding condition is it clear any doubt so far any doubt so far no sir no doubt okay so this horizontal component see this uh, horizontal component of reaction n equals p this horizontal component uh, i have taken horizontal component as uh, f i have taken this horizontal component as f when this f equals p equals p that means when uh, during the static condition in that case this horizontal component n uh, which is nothing but my f is known as rolling resistance is known as rolling resistance that means this frictional value f when this p is equal to f when there is no motion the, during that time this frictional force f present is known as rolling resistance and the distance x and this distance x that is uh, this particular uh, distance x this particular distance x this distance x is known as the rolling re coefficient of rolling resistance this distance x is known as coefficient of rolling resistance so with this small activity we can conclude that the we can conclude that the magnitude of rolling friction due to surface depression is greater than the sliding friction magnitude that means greater force is required to roll a body that body can be anything then to slide a body on a rough horizontal surface due to the presence of depression is it clear any doubt so far hello no sir no doubt okay so i don't think enough time is left uh, some more different types of frictions are there so that we will cover in the next class so till then uh, till then goodbye so i am ending this class over here if anyone is left to give his or her attendance you can write in the chat box or else if you are having any kind of doubt regarding midterm regarding the syllabus of this subject if you have not understood anything you can ask me or else you can leave the meeting thank you